Good morning, wise. Listen, Coach T wanted to come in with you real fast on this day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> I hope everybody had a good turkey day as I'm trying to adjust my light. Good morning. I'm not really sure. Listen, I had an awesome Thanksgiving up until the middle of the night with this weather changing. And then all of a sudden it seemed like my, well, I'm not gonna say mine cause I ain't claiming it, but you know, this little asthma stuff started to kick in. And I kept on saying, I should have taken my pump sooner and I did not. And so now I have like a little froggy voice. <clears throat> so excuse me on that. Um, but I wanted to come in real fast and speak to you this morning about, good morning. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. I wanted to come on this morning real fast and just talk to you about, um, believing what God has told you, believing the promises. All right. Believing his promises and eliminating anxiety, eliminating anxiety. And I wanted to bring this reason. I wanted to bring this topic up for a specific reason, um, well, for a few specific reasons. One, sometimes when in this coaching industry, um, you get a lot of DMs, you get a lot of emails, you get a lot of, you know, um, people asking questions and things, especially when it comes down to um, the type of coaching that you do, which, you know, I coach wives who are um, married to the absent or unavailable husband. Um, and a lot of these wives are going through, you know, separation, um, almost at the, you know, door of divorce, almost, um, you know, just giving up on their marriage. Um, and so a lot of times they have a lot of questions. They have a lot of questions. And I am so okay. I am so okay with ask, answering questions. What I am not okay with, <laughs> what I am not okay with is wives projecting their stuff on me okay they are not um they are projecting their stuff on me and that is one of coach t pet peeves <laughs> because i am an advocate for self-care because i am a advocate for making sure that um we take care of our mental and emotional health it is very important that i do not allow wives to do that okay and um like I said, I have no problem answering questions. I have no problems redirecting you. I have no problems guiding you. Um, I have no problems, you know, sharing God's word with you. But I do have a problem when wives try to project their stuff on me. That's when I have to stand and say, okay, I have to protect my self-care as well. I have to protect my mental health as well. All right. And so um, that's one. Um, another way that this anxiety thing has been coming up, um, is, you know, through stress. Um, I know like, I, you know, me recently, like I said, I lost a loved one and I think it's not just losing just that one loved one. I think it's just the total of the loved ones that I lost this year, um, that has been weighing on, has been weighing on me as well. And so I know sometimes that can cause, um, anxiety, but even with that, I want to encourage wise, even with the different circumstances that you're dealing with, the different things that you're going through. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5 and 7, 5 and 7, I want to read it to you verbatim um, what it says, because God reminds us to cast our cares onto him. Cast our cares. And I think one version said, cast our anxiety, cast our anxiety onto him. Um, cast our anxiety onto him. It said, cast all your anxieties onto him because he cares for you. All right. So when you are dealing with anxiety wise, <laughs> let me just say this. <laughs> when you are dealing with anxiety, when you are dealing with, you know, um, that uncomfortable place, there is a place that you can dump that stuff on. Okay. There is someone that you can dump that on. And that is God. That is God. God is the person that's telling you, hey, cast your cares on me. Hey, bring that anxiety to me. Bring that worry into me. Bring, bring those concerns to me. I care for you. I don't want you to have to carry that load because I already know 
what it can do. And a lot of times wives get to a place where they have allowed um, that situation to get bigger than what it, you know, what it should have been. And now all of a sudden it, it has blown up and it's, and it's, you know, you're, they're out of control with it. But I just want to remind you today that there is a place, there is a place that God, um, um, wants, um, that you can release that to, and that is God. All right. And so on that note, I want to just share this. It is time to believe what God has promised you, right? Okay. And it begins with a mind shift. And I'm looking down because I'm reading um, off my other phone. <laughs> okay. Trying to get to your promise from an unsubmitted husband. And hear me on this, wise. Hear me on this. And I'm just going to just say a quick prayer. Father, we bless you. We love you. We thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace and mercy. I pray now I welcome you into this live, God. Praying for whoever to receive this message, God, they receive it with gladness, God, that it be confirmation, that it brings some type of healing, awareness, revelation to them, God, today in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So hear me on this, wives. Hear me on this because so many wives are struggling in this area for this specific reason. And I have to go because I have a 10 o'clock session, but I want to share this with you real fast. Trying to get your promise from a unsubmissive husband who has not made Christ a priority in their life is a waste of your energy. All right. I want to just say that part off top. It's a waste of your energy. And so many wives can eliminate so many wives can eliminate a lot of their pain by embracing that practical tool, all right? You are not, wife, okay? Let me say this. You are not going to be able to get the promise that God promised you from your husband. You are not going to be able to get too much from a husband who has not submitted his full life to Christ and made Christ the head of his life and his priority, okay? Your husband, your husband, and I, and again, I'm just sharing these things based off of my experience as a coach, my experience as a wife, and my experience, you know, um, I've had, you know, in the field. I'm just sharing this with you. Your husband, your husband, wife, possibly desires to keep the promises that he made to you. A lot of wives are saying, well, he said this, and he said he want to work it out, and he said he don't really want a divorce, and he's saying this. And you have to understand, you are dealing with a double headed person when they have not given their life over to Christ. Now, I'm not saying that they don't know Jesus. I'm not saying that they have never, you know, proclaimed Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. But what I'm saying is if you're dealing with a spouse who has not fully submitted their life over to Christ, stop wasting your time, energy, emotions <laughs> on some of the things that they are telling you and the promises they are making to you. They are not stable in their ways at this time. Okay. And so I want to help you today in that area. Okay. The promises that your husband are the promises that your husband is making to you. I'm not saying that he does not desire to do those things, but what I am saying is, don't put all your eggs in a bag <laughs> when it comes down to that. All right. At the end of the day, it's time for wives to get a hold and grab a hold to the promises of God and what God has said to them. All right. Anxiety is real. Anxiety is real. All right. But I also like to say it like this: It starts with a thought it starts with a thought and one can literally take you over the edge if you do not grab a hold of this and let's go back to what i said in the beginning if you have some type of issue going on in your marriage or you're dealing with you know the 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 the, you standing for your marriage and you know you're dealing with that kind of situation or whatever if you're dealing with that you have to understand you have to understand anxiety can take place from that one thought the Bible tells us in, I think, uh, Corinthians that we have to pull down those, those, those thoughts, those imaginary thoughts. We have to pull down those strongholds. We have to pull those things down and we have to renew our mind daily in God's word. Okay. You can take that one thought and run with it and it will literally take you somewhere else. Okay. I once heard a preacher say anxiety comes about when a person has tried to be too strong for too long. And this goes back to that person who's trying to hold on to, um, you know, oh, I got it. Oh, I'm good. No. Nah, it's cool. No, nah, I'm all right. You know, I'm good with that. You know, I'm, I'm okay with this. And you know, dog, where you're not okay. <laughs> like, you know that you're not okay. You need to pull that, that thought down. You need to bring that, that, that thought, that thought down. You need to deal with that issue. So it does not overwhelm you and get the best of you later. Okay. It's the thinking, uh, it's the thinking or anxiety. I'm going to tell you what the definition of anxiety is. Anxiety is thinking or imagining something that has not even taken place. It is defined as an intense 
excessive and persistent worry and fear about an everyday situation or like in this situation, uh, wives who are standing in for their marriages uh, for a wife who's probably, you know, thinking about her marriage restoration and when it's going to come about, when it's going to, you know, come to pass. All right. And when it comes to the restoration of your marriage, this feeling can seem like a nightmare. It can seem like a nightmare if you do not grab a hold to it. OK, if you do not grab a hold to it. With all of the hows and the wins, you can literally make yourself sick or crazy. And let me tell you something. Coach T is not going there with you. <laughs> okay? I'm not going to go there with you. And the reason why I'm not going to go there with you because I had to try. I've had to try for many, many years of protecting my own mental health. Okay? Protecting my own mental and emotional health. And so I'm not going to let you drag me down. Okay, I want you to get this and understand this, wife. Anxiety is the spirit of heaviness. It's a spirit of heaviness, okay? And once again, if you do not cap capture that thing right away and grab a hold to it, it can take you down, all right? It can take you down. So you're probably saying, what does anxiety have to do with your marriage restoration? Like, what does that have to do with your marriage restoration? Anxiety can cause you not to believe what God promised you, Okay. And when that happens, that just reveals a lack of trust, a lack of knowledge, and a lack of faith, okay? A lack of trust, trust, a lack of knowledge, and a lack of faith. But what happens when you do believe? Because I have some wives who suffer with anxiety, but they still do believe, right? They still do believe. Can you have anxiety and still believe God? You absolutely can. You absolutely can. But the key to it is making sure that you grab a hold to that thought quickly. If it is not lining up with the promises that God has promised you, if it is not lining up with God's word, you got to, you got to bring that thought down, okay? You have to bring that thought down. And that's why it's so important to renew your mind in Christ daily, all right? Romans 12 and 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect, okay? The enemy uses your circumstances against you, but God uses your circumstances for you, all right? The enemy knows how to distract the wife. He knows how to bring different things up in her spirit, in her mind, in her, you know, in her soul to cause her to start thinking negatively or thinking against what God has already promised her. And this is why I want to come in and encourage you, wives. You cannot do that, all right? You cannot do that. And this is why you got to get healthy, all right? You got to take care of not just your um your your self care, but you got to also take care of your soul. You have to also take care of your soul. And I always tell wives, especially in my curriculum, I tell wives you have to nurture your emotion, your your soul. That's your mental. That's your mind. That's your heart. That's your will. You have to nurture those things as well. Okay. This is why you have to take care of your mental and emotional health and take it seriously. So many wives are. So many wives are. Um, leaving this area and and leaving it to God alone like okay well God they said God gonna heal me so God gonna heal me all right God gonna heal me so I'm gonna just you know I'm gonna just leave like that all right but that is not where it stops at okay you can't just say okay God gonna heal me and that's all that's it no the Bible reminds us that faith without works is dead too many wives are taking part of the Bible and making it their own and that's not how this goes you have a part in this okay Marital restoration don't just happen all on God. <laughs> like you have a role to play in this, okay? No, ma'am. God is the beginning of your healing, all right? God is the beginning state of your healing, all right? But he put people, places, and things in order but to get you to the next level on your journey, all right? So I want to talk to you about your promise because... Most of the time, when you come to me and you come into, you know, I, you know, I sign up for her bonus booze. One of the questions I'm going to ask you from the beginning is, what did God tell you concerning your marriage? And the reason I ask that question because I do not want you to get the idea that I am going to be the one who fix your marriage, or I'm going to be the one who can save your marriage. That is not what her bonus boost is about. I am not the one that's going to save your marriage. I'm not the one that's going to fix your marriage. I help you to heal and begin your healing your and begin your healing process by getting yourself realigned with God. All right. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. So the Bible talks about um the promises. It talks about that in second second Corinthians 1 and 20. But all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. All right. 
And we hear that statement and we hear that Bible verse all the time. All God promises are yes and amen. All God promises are yes and amens. But I want you to hear this, okay? I want you to hear this. A pastor once said, the promises that God has given to that person is for that person who endures to the end. I'm not saying that you're gonna have a um, you're not gonna ever have a bad day. I'm not gonna even sit here and say that you're not gonna have some some days where you like, you know, you feel like kind of like, mm, I don't really know about this guy. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is you gotta learn how to battle that feeling. You have to learn how to get get rid of that, get rid of that that thought and renew yourself and get yourself back to going in a forward direction. You gotta learn how to get unstuck. Once you have walked with somebody, somebody has given you biblical tools and practical tools on how to get stuck. You have to make sure that you are maintaining that, okay? You have to make sure that you have to uh, maintain that by getting yourself out of that funk. God has made you a promise, right? If God has made you a promise, then that, that promise is already, it's, it's already finished. It's already said. It's already done. But there are still parts of this and there's still parts that you have to do, okay? You have to make sure that you are enduring to the end. You don't get what God has promised you without enduring. And that's why I'm always encouraging wives. And I do. I say this all the time to keep showing up. Keep showing up. You have to show up every single day like this is going to be the day that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. This is going to be the, the day that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. All right. Wives, you have to keep showing up because you already know the battle is won. But in order to get to the finish line God has prepared for you, you have to be prepared for the promise that he has promised you. Come on, Jesus. There's no way God is going to be like, all right, she good. I'm going to give you the promise. I just said what I said. Here it goes. You know, enjoy. That's not what type of God we serve. <laughs> That's not the type of God that we serve. We serve a good, good father. Okay. We serve a patient father. He knows that we will not be able to handle some of those things that he has promised us now. He has promised us. He knows that we won't be able to handle or we have the, the, the right attitude or the right uh, uh, demeanor or the right, you know, uh, we, we are in, have the right character for some of those things that he has promised us. This is why so many, why, this is why so many marriages have a lot of false starts because wives are begging and begging and begging and begging and begging and begging and pleading and pleading. God, please, God, please, God, please bring my husband back home. God, please bring my husband back home. And you're doing all these things. And then God said, okay, all right, okay, all right. I'm going to go ahead and let him come back home. And then he comes back home and then you have a false start, right? Then you have a false start and you have to end up still going through that process, right? And so it's so important for wives to understand that your promise is already set. Your promise is already there. But how you get to it is by enduring. And enduring means you have to go through your process. Enduring means you have to face some hard days. Enduring means you have to you have to, you have to follow those, those tools that your coach has been teaching you. You have to follow some of those steps that your coach has been sharing with you. You have to actually do the work that we're actually teaching you to do in order for you to be able to keep going. Listen, just like you as a wife have to do certain things, I, I'm a coach and I'm still a wife and I have to still practice some of those same things that I teach my wives. You have to understand this thing ain't going get no easier for, for a coach is because we are uh, coaches in this thing. But for us who are coaches and we are wives as well, we have to practice the same exact stuff that we're teaching you. So it's important that you get that. All right. So let me share these three points and then I'm gonna let you go. As coaches, like I said, we get a lot of questions about marriage restoration, all right? We get a lot of questions, and I want to say this. Stop looking for your husband to rescue you or to rescue your marriage, all right? That ain't going to happen, so stop looking for that, all right? Look for God. Expect God and not your husband. The only person who can heal your marriage is him, not your coaches, <laughs> not your husband, not a prophet, come on now, not a pastor, God. The only person who can heal your marriage wives is God. When you sign up for curriculums, do not sign up under the, 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 the idea that, okay, this coach is going to help me bring my husband back home. No, we're going to teach you practical and biblical ways for the ones who are, you know, teaching, you know, God's word, we're going to teach you practical and biblical ways for you to work and maintain on yourself, for you to work, to work on yourself. And we're going to allow God to do what he's going to do because we don't have no control over that. You don't have no control over that. So stop expecting people and stop expecting your husband to rescue you and expect God. Okay. God, him alone gets the credit for healing and bringing about the restoration in your marriage. All right. Point two. Time can be your best friend or your worst enemy, okay? Time can be your best friend or your worst enemy. 
Focusing on how long things are taking to get better can literally drain and, unmo and, and make you unmotivated, okay? It can drain you and make you unmotivated. But if you are, if you look at the time God is, if you look at the time from a different perspective, you can look at it as God preparing and prepping you for what's to come. You will begin to see things clearly, all right? Your prayer should be, Lord, don't give me anything or allow my husband to return back to me until I'm ready. That means my attitude, my character, my patience, all that, all right? Don't give, don't, don't send my husband back home and you know my, my attitude is still jacked up. Don't send my husband back home and you know I still can't talk right. Don't send my husband still, you know, back home and I'm still, you know, I still got a major attitude with him. I got unforgiveness in my heart. Like, don't send my husband back home for that, right? I'm calling you in just a moment. Don't send my husband back home. Don't call, don't, don't send my husband back home for that, all right? And so I just want to just put that part out there, all right? Lastly, lastly, it is time for us to believe what God has promised us, all right? It is time for us to believe what God has promised us. How we do that? Like I mentioned early in this video, it starts with shifting your mindset. I've coached too many wives who have told me exactly what God has promised them about their marriage. Yet, yet, they still struggle with unbelief because of what they see happening presently, all right? Because of what they see happening presently in their marriage. And you cannot focus on what you see happen presently in your marriage, all right? They're putting too much focus on the problem versus the promise, all right? 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 says, so we don't look at the troubles we can see now, whether we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever, all right? Sounds like faith to me, right? <laughs> that sounds like faith. I won't ever get tired. I won't ever get tired of sharing and saying that marriage restoration is a faith walk. Marriage restoration is a faith walk. So when wives say, oh, I'm standing for my marriage or I'm standing for my marriage. Make sure you know what you're standing for, okay? Because it's not just you standing for your marriage, okay? It's not just, like, okay, I'm out here standing for my marriage, now what? No, it is a faith walk. It is a faith walk. And if you're struggling in your faith, I can best believe that the promise that God has given you, you're going to struggle on your marital restoration journey as well. All right. You're going to struggle on your, on your journey as well. And so I want to ask you a question, wife. Do you believe what God has promised you? That's just a simple question. <laughs> like, do you really believe what God has promised you? Because if you don't, that could be an indicator that there are areas in your life that needs addressing. It's areas in your life that needs to be addressed. Okay. What areas are you still struggling with? What areas you need healing in? What areas do you need deliverance in? Come on, Jesus. Who or what do you need to release in or forgive? What areas of your life you need to be intentional about? What parts of you needs to be restored? Okay? These are just some simple questions that I ask my wives when, uh, when going through this, this, you know, this curriculum before they start the curriculum. All right? And this is where her bonus boost comes in at. This is where my curriculum comes in at. All right? I support wives on their journey by using a 13-step self-care, soul-care curriculum. All right. Her body boost was designed to help wives become unchained from their husband's unhealthy choices and to walk in complete freedom by prioritizing her self-care. Her body boost is the beginning steps for hurting wives to begin their healing process while suffering in an unhealthy marriage. OK, it's the beginning steps. All right. It helps wives to revitalize her awareness, realign her faith, renew her thinking, regain self-control over herself. Reclaim her future and rebuild her life by utilizing biblical and practical principles. Okay? This is a six-week intimate virtue curriculum. If you are ready to make some changes, wives, if you're ready to make some changes, I want to encourage you to sign up today for your Herbonity Boost. You can sign up at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Listen, the promises that God has made to you, it's already sealed. It's already done. It's already finished. Do not allow anxiety. Do not allow anxiety to take you backwards. Do not allow anxiety to take you down the, 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 the wrong path. This is what the enemy is using these days as a distraction. Don't focus on what you see presently in your marriage. What you see right now presently in your marriage that's what the enemy wants you to see. <laughs> he wants you to see they say this ain't working. This thing is really jacked up. Ain't no hope for us. He wants you to see that, but you have to pro you have to focus on the promise versus the problem. And so I want to encourage you and do not allow other people to project 
they issues on you okay do not do that and i want to encourage wives if you are having that issue you need to work on that instead of putting that on somebody else i always tell my wives get you a pen get you a piece of paper and write it out okay write out those emotions write out how you feeling write those things out and let it flow if you want to get it out get it out that way but that is not fair to project and put your stuff on someone else that's not fair don't do that all right but i do want to encourage you to sign up today for your herbal news at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com listen i hope y'all enjoyed this uh what black friday y'all going out doing some shopping coach t not maybe i got children they might change my mind but we'll see <laughs> Y'all have a happy, happy Friday, and I will talk to you soon. Blessings.